Internet News Digest, 12th of May 3308. We read the news so you don't have to. In this week's news, salvation scares off the Thargoids. Professor Palin gathers many meta-alloys. Zach Rackham celebrates becoming a trillionaire. There's trouble brewing in the Pegasi sector. And we have a prediction for a day-long planetary collision happening this weekend. As was widely anticipated, Thargoids have suddenly vanished from the Didio, Novas and Sosong systems, leaving HIP-38225 and Paukuman to struggle along with their longer-lasting incursions. Salvation's military number one, Commodore Morag Halloran, confirmed that this was a result of Salvation's superweapon being set off in the three systems. Unlike its previous uses, Salvation did not send the anti-Thargoid weapons on his own ships into the three affected systems. The Alliance, Imperial and Federal capital ships in each system are believed to have been responsible for firing the weapons on Salvation's behalf. Also unlike previous uses, there have as yet been no reports of crashed Thargoid ships on any of the planets in the three systems. It is possible that the newest version of the weapon is more precise in its effect than the version used in the Kornsar system and in the Pleiades last year. Halloran claimed that all the Thargoids in all three systems retreated into hyperspace to escape the tuned electromagnetic pulse given off by the weapons. The three admirals who have been coordinating the defence of the three systems for the past two weeks congratulated Salvation on the efficacy of his weapon. Jade Sandalin of Vox Galactica assesses that it now seems likely that the three superpowers will rely even more heavily on Salvation's assistance in future, and that Salvation will receive increased levels of funding for research and development of even more devastating weaponry. Those who assisted in fighting off Thargoids, and who turned in their combat bonds at Plymouth Howl in the Changier system, Nuslane Volhard settlement in the Zlota system, and Sturkai Orbital in the Lesheimer system, can now claim their additional cash reward. Thargoids continue to infest HIP-38225 and Pikeman, which are presumably less glamorous and newsworthy. In related news, long-term Thargoid researcher Professor Ishmael Palin is said to be delighted with the meta-alloys supplied to him as part of his new research programme into the biomechanical nature of Thargoid technology. He has authorised the release of high-capacity corrosion-resistant cargo racks to the top participants in the appeal, and these can allegedly be collected from James Sneddon Starport in the Morton Mart system. Palin has previously hinted that these racks will be useful during the second phase of his research programme, which apparently has the backing of the three superpowers. Palin's original research programme into Thargoid sensors, or unknown artefacts as they were then known, terminated abruptly after interference by the Federation and other unnamed adversaries, so it's encouraging to see him returning to Thargoid research. James Seddon Starport will continue to offer high prices for Thargoid tissue samples, which will be used throughout Professor Palin's research programme. Presidential non-candidate Zachary Rackham has bought Orbis Starport fabricator Cavernous Space Frames. In the process, and somewhat mysteriously, his personal wealth is believed to have passed one trillion credits. That's a one with a credit sign in front and 12 zeros after it. Quite how this total value can have increased immediately after buying Kavanagh is somewhat mysterious. Perhaps he bought it for well under the market value. The purchase itself was a bit strange. Rackham has been negotiating with the Kavanagh Board of Investors for years and never seemed anywhere close to making the deal. And now, suddenly, they've caved and sold the company out. In line with Rackham's business practice, Kavanagh Space Frames will henceforth be known as Rackham Space Frames. CEO Susanna Haynes put a positive spin on the purchase, suggesting that the improved financial stability that an ex-pirate like Rackham can offer may help improve efficiency in the manufacturing process. In celebration of the takeover, and of his first 
trillion credits, Rackham has invited a wide selection of guests from all over the Federation to Beta Hydri to celebrate, in what is expected to be a highly lavish week-long party at the top of his skyscraper, Rackham Spire. Obscenely large quantities of Apavietiae, Geraceum Gueus beer, Panta prayer sticks, Uzayan tree grubs and Andaliga fireworks are expected to be consumed or set fire to. Independent pilots are invited to supply these rare goods to Edmondson High in Beta Hydre. Rackham has arranged for all those taking part to receive temporary permits to the system to make delivery easier. The Federal Times suggests that, suspicious though the purchase may be, it can only provide Rackham with an immense boost as an undeclared presidential candidate. Rackham's space frames, as it is now, has played a huge part in the colonisation of space and will lend a gravitas to the potential candidate should he choose to take on Hudson and Winters and stand to become an independent president in 3309. And with Rackham whining and dining, some of the Federation's top politicians, publicists and press barons, he may well be sounding out those who might form the core of his election team. A failed assassination attempt has put the Kumo crew on a war footing, with Pirate King Arkham Delane vowing vengeance against his former right-hand man, Vidar Trask. Arch Corsair Trask, a member of the Kumo Council's small, secretive inner circle, has been the behind-the-scenes administrator who's kept the piracy operation running smoothly for many years. Now, it seems, he wants to be in charge and to introduce a more corporate, economically more productive approach to the Kumo systems. In order to introduce this modernised approach, he hired assassins to kill Delane. The Pirate King seems to have escaped by the narrowest of margins, with his personal guards holding off Trask's hired assassins just long enough for Delane to escape. A pitched battle is now raging between the sub-factions of the Kumo crew, with the coup attempt struggling to take control of key resources. Many pirate groups and freelancers are believed to be assisting this effort, although Trask has apparently not yet made an appeal to independent pilots to help. Meanwhile, Delane has vowed to put down the rebellion and has described the methods he will use to exact a violent revenge on his one-time most trusted colleague. It is not clear at this stage what part the other two arch-corsairs plan to take in the battle. They are Kay Volantine, once part of the Blue Viper Club Dredger Clan, and recently appointed Callan Salamanca, the son of the deceased Gideon Solus Salamanca, who is believed to have died on Delane's orders. A very, very slow collision between two ice worlds is confidently predicted by canon scientist Commander LCU No Fool Like One, way out in the Priye Ake. PX-XC3-1 system, moons AB3B and AB3C will gently come into contact at 2319 on Saturday the 14th of May. Travelling at only 22 kilometres an hour at impact, the icy bodies are expected to very slowly merge, overlapping nearly 90% during the middle of the encounter. The collision and separation will last all day Sunday, and it won't be until early on Monday morning that they separate and very, very slowly move apart again. Potential scientists are reminded of two important caveats. Firstly, the collision has been predicted using an astrolabe and a set of divining rods, but it has not yet been observed, so it is possible this event may be something of a damp squib. Secondly, doing science on the surface of a moon that is colliding with another moon carries with it certain risks. Finding oneself wearing a moon as a hat, or indeed finding oneself inside a moon, which can easily happen, is often found to be fatal. If you choose to visit this exciting phenomenon, be aware that you may die. And, depending on the circumstances of your death and the location of your active ship, you may find yourself transported some distance by the so-called Rescue Rangers. And that's this week's Galnet News. Galnet News, we read the news so you don't have to. Music 